Since 1947, the World Affairs Council has become the preeminent global stage for world leaders and the public to inform, engage, and debate the most important issues of our time. It's your world. Get to know it. At some point, I would say around the year 2004, 2005, uh, I became really enthusiastic about uh, the power of the Internet. If you remember back then, there was a lot of talk in the United States about what the Internet could deliver in terms of political change. That was the time when Hoover Dean made great use of new media, his presidential campaign, and uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm uh, about new media and what the internet can accomplish. And looking at some of these discussions and developments in the US, <clears throat> I saw that um, we can probably use some of the same powers to push against dictators in Belarus, but also in other countries in the former Soviet Union. You know, in Central Asia, in the Caucasus, there are plenty of problematic spots uh, on that map. So I joined this NGO uh, called Transitions Online and eventually became their director of new media. And my job was actually to travel throughout the former Soviet Union and countries of Central Eastern Europe and meet with activists and bloggers and journalists and train them how to use blogs, how to use social networks, how to use new media to push against uh, their governments, but also campaign on uh, political and social causes. I think it was in 2009, uh, during the events in Iran, uh, that um, a lot of the issues I've been concerned about really came into focus uh, for me. Uh, if you remember, there was a lot of excitement uh, in America about the prospects of the Twitter revolution in Iran. Uh, you know, virtually every single media outlet in this country uh, has highlighted <coughs> the important role that Twitter has played in uh, enabling Iranians to get out in the streets. And uh, very few actually looked into whether Iranians were actually using Twitter. Right? The only media entity that examined that claim that I know of uh, was Al Jazeera, who went and did fact-checking on the ground in Iran to examine how many Iranians on the ground were actually tweeting and they could only verify uh, 60 accounts. They could only verify 60 Iranians on the ground in Iran who were actively posting tweets to Twitter during that period, right? There may be many more, of course, but Al Jazeera couldn't find them, right? And, and, and they tried. Uh, then some other people started looking. Uh, it turned out that the number of registered users in Iran before the protest started uh, was only 20,000. Right? So we're not talking about those who were tweeting, we're talking about those who bothered and checked the box to register, to register on Twitter. Of course, many of these numbers never made it to uh, American media, and the discussion of these tools here was a lot of commentators uh, proclaiming that Twitter was the critical tool for organizing and mobilizing, and uh, really praising, uh, you know, not just uh, Twitter, but also its founders and the company itself for providing this great service to, to, um, uh, to Iranians. Uh, even more importantly, I think even the American government uh, bought into this myth that Twitter was actually instrumental to the uh, protest in Iran. The Iranian government actually turned to many of the social media websites uh, to hunt down, to hunt down and track down dissidents, and track down protesters. They actually went and systematically uh, studied connections between activists uh, and between activists and their foreign supporters. Uh, Iranian Americans and uh, you know other Iranians from abroad who were flying into Tehran uh, shortly after the protests. Many of them were actually asked uh, whether they had Facebook accounts at the border uh, by the passport control people. And those of them who said no uh, were basically asked to, you know, uh, well, they were asked again, do you have a Facebook account? They said no. And then the officer would go and look it up on Google. And if they lied, you know, all of their friends would be systematically noted down. And right? uh, the way even more. Uh, you know, aggressive things that the government did. They, for example, turned to many of the photos that were posted by activists to uh, social media sites from the protests. So they turned to sites like Flickr, where you see a lot of photos from the protest, and they collected some of the photos that had 
faces of the protesters, and they circle those faces in red, and they basically republish those photos on government-run news sites, and they ask the public to identify whoever they can recognize in the photos, right? And they claim to have arrested 40 people simply based on the tips that they received from the public based on uh, the photos that appeared on the social media websites. And, you know, it can go on and on and on. They made very active use uh, of these technologies.